Hello everyone, this is a quick start guide on how to get started with Premiere Composer. After you install and open Mr. Horse Product Manager, you will be asked to log in. If you don't have an account yet, click here to create one, it's free. I'll just click here to install Premiere Composer and it will automatically install the starter pack with it. Now I'm good to go. To launch Premiere Composer in Premiere, go to Window, Extensions and click Premiere Composer. Let's start with transitions. I have these two clips and I want to add the transition between them. So I'll select transitions and let's say that I want to add this camera pan effect. This little burger icon indicates that there are more variations of this same item. Left, bottom, right, on top. You can click view all at once to see all the variations next to each other. So I'll just drag the left variation to the timeline. Here we go, and this is the preview. You can see that it was added with the sound. If you want to add the transition without it, you can just uncheck this checkbox, and then if you add the transition, it will be added without it. I'll just undo to remove the transition, and then you can reposition the transition, just by dragging it around. It's grouped by default. If you press Command or Control Shift G, you will ungroup it, and then you can select the individual clips. In this case I can, for example, select the out transition and shorten it to make the transition quicker. Please note that you can shorten the transition this way, but making it longer will not work in most cases. Now let's take a look at the text presets. So let's add, for example, this one. I'll drag it to the timeline. This is how it looks. You can change the duration just like this. And then you can change how it looks. You can see that Premiere Composer has automatically switched to the Edit tab. Here you can change the text, the font, the scale, position. You can also change the skew. I'll just reset this. And this is how it looks. Awesome! Now let's edit the animation. I'll move the playhead to the beginning where you can see how it animates and open this animation group. Here are the settings for the animation. So if I for example change the position of the animation to 400, now it will animate 400 pixels on the x-axis and 100 pixels on the y-axis. If you drag the number, you can see how the animation changes. I'll reset it. I can see that it animates rotation, and if I set it to zero, it will not animate the rotation at all. Each item has a different settings, including the animation. In this case, you can also change the setting for overshoot, delay, frequency, decay, and so on. I'll just reset and open up the motion blur. You can also turn on the motion blur, but keep in mind that turning the motion blur on will make the rendering a bit slower. Let's preview the whole thing. Great. Now let's take a look at the text boxes. I'll increase the size of the previews and let's add this one. I'll drag it here. I can change the duration and this is how it looks. I'll select the clip and it will automatically switch to the edit tab and now I can change the text to something like subscribe. That's a quick tip for you by the way. Then a font, position, scale, the color, the black will do just fine. And I can also edit the container. The container is the box. So, I can round the corners, change the stroke. I can also turn off the stroke and turn on the fill. Then change the paddings and maybe a bit of a skew. And if you subscribe, you'll make one horse very happy. One more quick tip. If you cut this clip, you can remove the ending and then you can still freely change the duration. 
the out animation will not be there. Now let's take a look at the sound effects. By pressing the right arrow key you will always select the next sound. Let's take a look at some funky sounds. The cool thing is that you can change the pitch. You can also reverse. Then you can reset. This is cool because some sounds can be really interesting. So let's now add some swoosh to this video. Here's a swoosh. I'll reset to zero, drag it to the timeline, and this is how it looks. Another quick tip, if I select this clip and select something in here, I can for example change the pitch and press replace. And now it's replaced. And now the user library. You can add your own stuff. Just click add folder. You can add a regular folder on your disk or a shared folder on an external drive or a Dropbox. In this case, I'll add this folder, which is on our Dropbox. And now I get a dialog asking me where I would like to store the previews. So Premiere Composer needs to render the previews and is asking me where I want to store them. If you are adding a shared folder or an external drive, we recommend the first option. That will render the previews into the folder you are adding. Otherwise, you can go with the second option. I'll stick with the first one and press OK. Now I can see that the previews are being rendered. And here is my library. I can check it out. It supports motion graphic templates, images, sound effects, and also a few video formats. You can hover scrub for the preview, drag it to the timeline, or if you double click, it will open the footage in the source monitor. I'll close it. And these previews are being stored in the folder you just edit. You can see it's being synced with the Dropbox. Please note that it takes a little while to render a preview for each video file. So it is not ideal for huge video libraries. <laughs> so there you go. We hope that this will serve you well. Thank you for watching and enjoy the free plugin. And subscribe if you like horses.